what's going on, it's LJ, and as promised, here's another update, vinyl update, with some of the things that I've found recently that I've kind of bundled into new hard rock heavy metal finds. Uh, a lot of this stuff is great, early, mid, late 70s, um, hard rock, or I guess it was metal at the time, it's hard rock now, forget that whole damn discussion, but on with the great vinyl, uh, all of these highly recommended stuff I was just thrilled to find. Um, live, Johnny Winter and it's another just um, I have such a fetish for uh, the the live 70s rock albums and this was uh, definitely a welcome addition to find in good condition a couple of finds from the Scorps fly to the rainbow I love the scorpions to death uh, animal magnetism is playing in the background and fly to the rainbow is just such I think it's their second album some lineup changes I think this is uh Lord Roth's Uli Roth's uh, first album with the band uh, a bit of a different sound from the Scorps than you're used to in the 80s, if you're familiar with that stuff. But still stellar nonetheless. For me, this is their first real Scorps album where their sound is just very, very obvious here. Animal Magnetism. Again, it's what we're listening to now. I've had um, this in Flight of the Rainbow. I've had lesser condition copies for quite a while, so this was a nice upgrade. You gotta love the Scorpions covers, always. I'm just pushing the limit, pushing the bar. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Animal Magnetism. This is one of my, if not my favorite, Scorps album ever, and that's so hard to put my finger on. I really love everything they've done. Upgrade copy of Master of Reality. I haven't even switched out the cover yet. Um, I, of course, had a copy of this, but the vinyl was uh, a little beat. This is uh, an older pressing. It's not a vertical swirl, just uh, an old Warner Green label. Great album, uh, mint vinyl, so I'll switch that out with my mint jacket and we'll have a great copy finally. A little 70s guitar rock, of course in the 70s if you had a guitar and you could play it, you were everything. So Alvin Lee's Pump and Iron, I thought this was fantastic, it's a promo copy, not for sale. So this for me, very similar to uh, a Robin Trower or, or Pat Travers, thing like that. I just, I, I thought it was great, I loved it. I'm really looking forward to it growing on me. Uriah Heaps. First LP. I've actually never seen this. Eh, let's flip it over, sorry. Out in the wild, um, and this one's just in great shape. I'm still starting to digest this. Again, their first album, Heap really hasn't found their sound yet. But I thought it I, it was good. I'm not going to say it was great or fantastic. Love that classic Mercury label too. It, it'll grow on me. Because my favorite Heap is Demons and Wizards which this is. This one a bit famous, um, not only for the great sound, uh, kind of the prog psych rock that it is, um, but also gatefold. For, I don't know if you can see the cover art, but probably one of the earliest instances of a hidden fallacy and sexual symbols, suggestive symbols here up at the top. I don't know whoever uh, hasn't noticed that, but if you haven't, you will and you do now. I was just uh, thrilled. Again, to add this to my collection. I guess uh, the jacket, unfortunately, isn't in the best shape, but the vinyl's fantastic. It sounds great. Another just essential 70s live recording that I've always had decent copies of, but stumbling on some of these, and then I had gotten access to somebody's collection, and they're like, you know, hey, LJ, I'm getting rid of some stuff. Come pick it out, and the vinyl was just mint. So Thin Lizzy, Live and Dangerous. Deep Purple's Stormbringer, Richie Blackmore's last record for quite some time, and I get my Deep Purple lineups confused, MK2, MK3, MK1, whatever. Uh, this was a great LP, I, I definitely loved it, and, and I'm, I've been familiar with it for a long time, I just haven't had a really nice copy on vinyl until now, but Stormbringer is good, kind of a continuation of what we heard on Burn, but Come Taste the Band, their uh, Purple's first LP without God, that's tight. Um, without Blackmore and with Tommy Bolin, uh, who unfortunately died shortly thereafter, one of my favorite Purple albums. Uh, I just love, love the sound that they got here. It's fantastic. I'm gonna try to get the sleep back on that. Jumping forward about 15 years, <laughs> YMT is contagious. Um, hair metal, if you will, and, and I'm definitely a hair metal fan, I like it, it's good stuff. It, it got me through, I, I cut my teeth on it to some degree, so I've always been a fan of it. So I got Contagious and 
So while we're here, I recently got an upgrade copy of In Rock We Trust. Um, again, a lot of these were just cases of mine not sounding so great. And YNT definitely has some credibility with me for being yesterday and today from way back in the 70s, shortening it to YNT and upgrading their sound. It's happy to have both of those. Sound great. Alice Cooper's School's Out. This is the famous desk. It's uh, just a great Alice Cooper album. The, uh, the legs fold out. This one's got a little damage to it. But yeah, the whole notion is the legs fold out here. So it looks like a desk. And said desk opens and within is the record. And it, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that came with, um, I don't know, paper panties or something like that, a cutout. They're not there in this one, but anybody that knows that wants to leave me a comment, that'd be cool. A late 80s, mid 80s, uh, kind of resurgence in Alice Cooper, performing his comeback with Constrictor. This has the uh, one of my favorite Cooper songs, which is The Man Behind the Mask from Friday the 13th, part six. Everyone knows I'm a huge horror fan. And this is um, just what would begin or, or come with Constrictor, Raise Your Fist and Yell, and then Trash, just building Alice back up to this, uh, introducing him to a new generation. And this is a fantastic LP. I wouldn't discourage anybody from picking it up. Last couple I want to share with everyone. Um, a couple more to add to my Tull collection, which is near complete at this point. I'm missing Crest of a Knave and maybe one or two others. This is Jethro Tull's A from 1980. Uh, uh, folks here noticing the A sign, and then on the back, again, I love the vinyl play with the covers. Going out to check out what's going on. This is um, an updated Tull sound for the early 80s. It's, it's definitely almost overproduced. But not in a bad way. It was really good. I liked it a lot. I actually hadn't heard A before uh, I picked this up a couple of weeks ago. I loved it. And Heavy Horses. And this was the last of... I've always called Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses, and the other one the title's escaping me right now. Kind of, um, and, and I think they refer to a lot as um, Tull's Escape to the Countryside, or Ian Anderson's Escape to the Countryside. There's a lot of those English folk sounding sound I just and I love that period of Tull and Tull fans will know what I'm talking about and this I think was the last in that trilogy Heavy Horses songs about animals um, this is so it's brilliant I love it but when you bump that up against is this 1979? 78 what would come two years later with A they're just completely different records Gone is that English folk mysticism those folk sounds and in is a fresh new really produced Tull but I mean still, if you're a fan of Tull, you'll love them both. And that's an update in a nutshell. Thanks everyone for watching. Those are some of the harder or heavier finds. I tried to group them together. I still have quite a bit of new stuff to show folks that I've been able to pick up and score lately. Some more videos coming. I'm actually going to shoot one more real quick one tonight. Three videos because I found um, a Led Zeppelin bootleg that I just can't put my finger on what the hell it is. So I'm going to do a bit of a call to arms for everyone. So thanks for commenting. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Talk to everyone later. Take soon. Uh, take care. See you soon. Bye. Ciao. Bye.